Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ping Pong's weekly webinar series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the top four reasons for Amazon sellers to be using the request to view button. Uh, we have Colleen Quattlebaum from Ecom Engine with us. Uh, so Colleen has, is, she leads the marketing team at Ecom Engine, and she has about 10 years of experience in the e-commerce industry. And um, you kind of analyze the marketing trends, strategize all the improvements for Ecom Engine's tools, and uh, you bring those insight and values to Amazon merchants. Right? Uh, she's our guest, and my name is Antonio Senna. I'm a sales manager here at Ping Pong Payments. Um, and I'll leave the floor to uh, Colleen to get going. Great. Thanks for the intro. I'm excited to be here today. So again, as Antonio said, I'm here to share with you the top four reasons to use the official Amazon request or review button. But before I jump into that, um, you know, he already gave me a, a good intro. So uh, thank you again. I'm Colleen. I'm based in Richmond, Virginia. So I'm on the other side of the the country from Antonio um, here in the US on Eastern time in Virginia. And uh, that's where our company is based, Ecom Engine. And just a quick background about Ecom Engine is uh, we started in 2007 and we have four tools in our suite of uh, software for Amazon sellers. Feedback 5 is our flagship tool, um, which was the first feedback and review management tool in the industry. And it's available in 15 uh, Amazon marketplaces. We re recently launched in uh, Amazon Singapore, Turkey, the UAE, and Brazil. Um, and then we have three other tools, Market Scout, which is an ASIN product research tool, and Restock Pro, which is FBA inventory management, and Smart Price, which is a repricer for Amazon merchants. So that's just a quick high-level overview of Ecom Engine. But uh, just to share a few things that I'm going to talk to you about today are, um, one is the restriction notices that a lot of sellers have received over the past year from Amazon in regards to the uh, review requests and feedback messages that they've been sending. Um, so I'll address some of those notices and why sellers are getting them and what you can do about it. And then I'll also talk about what exactly is this request a review button, where you can find it, how you can use it, and why sellers should use this method. And I'll share some results that real sellers are getting from using the request a review button, as well as how to automate that. So, Without further ado, um, I'll jump into the restrictions. So there's a lot of black hat tactics out there um, that some sellers are using to try to get reviews and they you know, should absolutely be restricted. Um, but there's many innocent sellers that are just uh, making minor mistakes in their email messages when they request reviews and they might not even realize it. Um, they're not trying to be um, you know, evil and manipulate uh, buyers. Um, but it could be interpreted based on the way that they, their language is written in their email content. Amazon may have interpreted it as incentivizing or manipulating customers to leave a positive review. So when sellers are restricted, they receive a message um, from Amazon, exactly this templated message that you see on the right side of your screen. And it just outlines eight reasons why you could have been restricted, but it doesn't give the exact reason why. So then a seller is left wondering, which of these uh, bullet points did I violate? Um, so in some cases, if they used important in the subject line, for instance, that's pretty obvious. Um, but it could be, you know, the second to last one there says you're either incentivizing or manipulating customer reviews. Um, that's a hard one to pinpoint. So you can't offer incentives. You can't ask specifically for a positive review you have to be very neutral. Um, but if Amazon has interpreted your message in any way as manipulating reviews, then you can be restricted. So. Do you know why Amazon or there's a change in like you know, their, their algorithm, why like these are started coming up in such mass over the course of the last year or so? Yeah, it was towards, towards the end of last year, especially we heard a lot of them. I'm not sure why or what happened. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of machine learning, you know, that was, that was sending them initially. Um, and because there definitely seemed to be certain dates that there was a big influx just from what I saw in um, seller forums and social media groups. It seemed like there were certain time frames where a lot went out at one time, um, but it does continue to happen. So it is a concern, you know, to use buyer seller messaging, you know, some customers are, are more nervous about requesting reviews because they don't want to get yeah. restricted. Thank you. Sure. So, um, so reviews and feedback, I want to address the difference. Um, it may seem obvious, but you'll hear people in the industry use these terms interchangeably. And so just to clarify, seller feedback, or when you hear the term feedback, that's specifically about the seller. 
So um, any feedback that's under seller feedback should be all about, you know, if the item arrived on time, of course, if you're selling through FBA, that's Amazon's responsibility. But if you're fulfilling by merchant, it's your responsibility to get it there on time. Um, is the item as described? So making sure your listing is 100% accurate is very important. Um, making sure that you're offering prompt and courteous service and responding quickly if a buyer does reach out to you. So those are all the types of things that roll up into your seller feedback. And product reviews are specifically about the item itself. Um, so again, a lot of people in the industry and consumers are confused too, which is which, you know. So, so I just wanted to clarify that because they do have different guidelines and impact you differently. But the product reviews are specific about that item um, and that's reflected on the uh, product detail page. So just to demonstrate a little bit about where these are seen, um, the seller feedback is on your Amazon storefront, as you can see there on the left, and buyers have 90 days to leave seller feedback. Whereas product reviews, again, is just about the product itself, and those reviews are seen on the product listing level. And the buyers can leave reviews at any time, even if they didn't purchase the product, it's just not considered a verified review unless Amazon proves that you purchased the product. Um, so again, buyers have 90 days to leave seller feedback, but product reviews can be left at any time. And both are very important um, to your success on Amazon. So How as far as some, oh yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask, I mean, I think you get in this later, but I was like, can do you, how important are reviews going mean, both aspects? I mean, you're saying they're very important, but I mean, do you know potentially like what kind of uh, uh, conversion lift it gives? Sure. So important uh, reviews are extremely important to your overall um, performance on Amazon. Um, if you're launching a new product, some experts have said that you need at least 21 reviews to really make an impact in terms of your visibility okay. on Amazon. But I think that there's really kind of like an unspoken formula is to have a really good quality of reviews. So as many four and five stars as you can, as well as um, a good quantity of reviews, but also recent reviews is important. So having recent reviews that are new um, and, you know, in the last month, for instance, show that your product is still relevant in the market. And overall, yeah. it's just good social proof. So, so yeah, just, um, but, but as far as the negative, the flip side of that if you get negative, it can really impact your, your seller performance and your seller health. So um, negative product reviews obviously are very damaging to your brand, you know, your trust, reliability, that sort of thing. And, um, but whereas seller feedback, if you get a drop in seller feedback, that can actually lead to your selling privileges being revoked. Um, and, and what I mean by that is because seller uh, or your order defect rate or your ODR, um, one of the metrics that rolls up into that is negative feedback. So if your negative feedback rate drops and your overall you know, ODR drop rating drops too low, then that can risk uh, you know, suspension. Um, I've always seen that this kind of has a, uh, sometimes can be more negative for people who smell a uh, smaller volume because you have that one negative feedback you know, to 10 orders versus one to 100. So. It's, yeah, if you're a smaller seller, it's really important that you, you work even harder because one bad seller feedback can really hurt you, correct? Right, right. And um, as far as the negative goes, buyers have 60 days to remove or update their feedback. So as a seller, I highly recommend that you have some notification uh, process in place so you are notified anytime you get negative seller feedback because the sooner or quicker you respond to that seller and you can resolve that situation, the more motivated they will be to update or remove that feedback. Um, and Amazon does permit sellers to send one polite request uh, to remove or update that feedback. So with feedback, you are allowed to ask them to remove it. Again, making sure that you satisfy the customer and that they're happy is first and foremost. Um, but in that 60 day window, if you can resolve their issues, then hopefully they'll be willing to remove that feedback because um, that can make a big difference. Um, product reviews, however, it's nearly impossible to remove a negative product review. Um, so you're not allowed to contact buyers uh, about their reviews other than commenting on the review itself. But the buyers are, or the reviewer is not alerted that you commented. So I encourage sellers to still comment on the reviews, especially the negative ones, even if that reviewer might not see it, because it just shows other uh, potential buyers that you're paying attention to your products, that you stand behind your product and your brand, that you want to make it right. 
Um, so, so just commenting as it's highlighted there in orange, commenting publicly, I think is very important when there's a negative review so that other potential buyers, when they're looking at it, they know that there's somebody behind this product that cares and that I can talk to <laughs> if I have a problem. <laughs> And to your point about the importance of reviews, over 90% of shoppers read reviews before making a purchase. I know I personally do. And uh, so the more reviews have proven to um, convert to more orders and more sales. Um, so obviously Amazon has their uh, top secret algorithm, but many studies have proven that reviews obviously play a big part in improving your organic search ranking. It also um, helps for your ability to advertise. Um, so many of the advertising programs, you have to have good reviews um, and reading your product reviews regularly, if it's your private label brand or something that you're selling is important because it can give you ideas of maybe how to bundle or kit the item with another piece and then maybe you'd have your own listing. So for instance, if you sell, um, maybe you have a coffee maker and then there's also a coffee pot and coffee mug or something that you want to put together, maybe that's a more attractive package or a bundle for people to purchase. Um, so maybe in the reviews, people have said, oh, I love this coffee maker. I wish it came with an extra coffee pot, something like that. Then you could sell it and have a new listing that's, uh, that's bundled or kitted that nobody else has. Um, and of course, it gives you an idea for product improvements or if there's a defective SKU and you need to pull that from your inventory um, or make any changes. Uh, so there's just a lot you can learn from reviews in addition to it just obviously being helpful and leading to more sales. Yeah, actually, I've heard from talking to Amazon that they say that the best sellers actually spend a portion of their week with their teams or if they're at a company doing the reviews because it helps them become better sellers and know what the market wants. So it really is a best practice to, to study those. Yeah. And so we talked about buyer seller messaging. And so we, we get asked um, fairly often, you know, now that the request a review button is out, can I still use buyer seller messaging? And because all the restrictions is Amazon trying to get rid of buyer seller messaging. Um, no, <laughs> no, they're not trying to get rid of it. It's just, yes, you can still use buyer seller messaging, but there's just pros and cons. There's risks and reward. So the pros are that you can send a customized message. Um, so within Amazon's guidelines, you can say what you want, you know, use your branding, your colors, whatever you want to do in that email. Um, as long as it's within Amazon's guidelines. Um, you can also do some A-B testing of subject lines to maybe improve your open rates, um, test what works best. And there's a lot of third-party tools on the market that can automate those messages. Um, some of the cons though, are that the seller is responsible for that message content. So you are at risk for violating Amazon's policies if you're not staying up to date, or if maybe you have somebody on your staff who's helping out to manage those emails. And if they think they wanna be clever and creative and tweak it, you know, and they, they might not know the rules, then it's putting yourself at risk. So you just have to be very careful. I, I've actually had this experience. Um, so uh, it's really important to make sure your customer service team, people do it, do know the terms of services because I was working with a company a couple of years ago where we had a customer service agent who mistakenly asked for someone to change their review because we had solved the issue for them. So we had an automatic 28 day suspension. So it wasn't a small account. I think we were doing about a hundred million dollars a year. So there, and it was, it was the month right prior to Black Friday. So not only did oh, we lose right. $8 million, but uh, I also gained a lot of gray hairs in the incident. So it's really important <laughs> to, to understand that side of it. Absolutely. So what is this request to review button that I've mentioned? Um, so it's been around for about a year. Um, late 2019 is when Amazon kind of quietly rolled it out like they often do. <laughs> um, and it's found in Seller Central. If you go to your orders page, it's on the right hand side, just as the screenshot shows, um, and it's just a little gray button. It will be available for you to click on as long as you are within five to 30 days of when the order was delivered. Um, it will be grayed out if, if you're outside of that range. So if, if you click on an order, um, then you'll be able to click that button. And what happens is Amazon sends a message directly to the buyer that requests both a review on the product as well as feedback on the seller. And since this message is going directly from Amazon to the buyer, it is 100% compliant. You have no, um, no customization regarding that message. Amazon has optimized the message. It's the same standard message that they send to everybody, but it does include 
the seller's name. It includes um, an image of the product as well as the product, the order number. Um, so it will give all of those details. And they've you know, worked hard to optimize this and it is proving to work. So again, this is a button in Seller Central and the message goes directly from Amazon to the buyer to request your review and feedback. This looks like a super manual process. So if you have like, like you know, a thousand orders in a day, it doesn't seem really scalable. I mean, please tell me you guys have something where you can automate this. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's actually where I'll get into, here's the meat of my presentation, the four reasons why every seller should use this button. Um, so as I mentioned, it is 100% compliant with Amazon's terms of service. So here's an example of what the message will look like. Um, again, since the message is going directly from Amazon to the buyer, you don't have to worry about their policies, their guidelines, they're the ones sending that message. So you can kind of set it and forget it and not have to stress over, you know, what you're saying in your message. Um, and um, as I mentioned, you know, it has the image of the product. It asks for the review of the item. So they're rating the item as the product review, as well as rating your experience with the seller is the seller feedback there towards the bottom. And so it makes it very easy for the consumer to, uh, to click on the stars and, and rate it very quickly and easily. So, um, so again, it's compliant, so no risks for restriction if you're using this. And another benefit is that these messages are automatically translated. So no need to use Google Translate or hire a translation company if you're using the, the request a review button. And even if you think, oh, but I only sell on Amazon.com, so that doesn't really matter for me. Well, not true. There's plenty of you know, folks who, as a buyer in their Amazon settings, their preferred language might be Spanish, regardless of where they live or what marketplace that they're purchasing on. Um, so the message will be sent not based on their marketplace, but based on their preferences in their, uh, in their Amazon account. So if, if I prefer Spanish as my language and my Amazon you know, personal account is set up for Spanish, then any review request messages that I get would be in Spanish like this one. So, so that's a great benefit. And then, yes, yeah, so as you said, Antonio, it's very manual to go into every order and click that button. Um, and so we worked very closely with Amazon to um, have access to trigger the request to review button through our tool Feedback 5. So you no longer need to log into Seller Central to manually click that. Feedback 5 will actually automate that process. And not only will we automate it, but you can uh, segment what days you want to send uh, your review request mm -hmm. based on each product that you have. So you can control the timing of your requests and customize it by ASIN. So maybe you have um, a toy that you sell. So sending that five or six days after the order is delivered makes sense but maybe vitamins, um, you want to send that closer to 30 days after mm -hmm. the order is delivered, um, where the person has a chance to actually enjoy the vitamins, make sure that they're happy with them, and then write the review. So if you sell a variety of ASINs, you might want to customize the timing when you ask for that review based on when you think they've seen the, the most value. Um, and then another uh, great piece of feedback five is when you automate this request to review button, you can also exclude certain orders so if you have any refunded orders, you of course, you don't want to request reviews or feedback if they probably had a negative experience or they requested a refund. Um, that just makes for a bad experience and could lead to negative. And also if you know that there's a defective SKU or something that you're pulling from your inventory, you can exclude those from getting any emails as well. So does this work? Um, so I, I wanted to share some results. Um, so this is number four. Of, of why you should use this button is the results are proving to work. These requests are bringing in more reviews and the reviews are bringing in more sales. So um, with Feedback 5, we took a random sample of about 1,200 Amazon sellers and we looked at the number of reviews that they received before they activated the request a review button in Feedback 5 and afterwards. And we saw about a 41% lift in their total reviews. Wow. Now, you'll see a spike there at the very beginning, and that's on day one, basically because as soon as the results or as soon as the button was activated or that campaign was activated to, to click the button, um, there was a backlog of orders, you know, between that five to 30 day window that needed to go out. But then even once the campaign kicked in and it leveled out, it was still about a 41% lift in reviews. So we're seeing really good results. Um, Amazon did work to optimize this. I think it's proving 
you know, that the, the message is effective and easy for the buyers to, um, to click, to leave those reviews. So we definitely encourage folks to use it. And then we also work closely with um, an awesome Amazon agency called Marknology. And they did some case studies with some of their clients to see if this button was proving to work effectively um, through Feedback 5 as well. And so we actually have a blog post that, um, that details out the full case study, but they saw some of their customers were seeing 15, 20, 30% increase in reviews when they started using the request a review button um, or automating that in Feedback 5. And some were seeing a pretty big decrease in negative. So, um, so just really good results again, using this button. It's kind of a no brainer in my opinion. You set it and forget it and the results are, are coming in. So here's just a, a brief look at, at the inside of our software and uh, the campaign. When you click the button or set up this campaign, then the same message that, that I showed earlier that Amazon sends is exactly what goes out. So in our tool, we just trigger the automation for that message to go out at the time and with the products or ASINs that you want. So just to kind of recap, again, it's completely compliant with Amazon's terms of service. The automated language translation is a great perk. And then save time, you know, segment uh, all of your emails based or your messages when it makes the most sense based on your products. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. So there's a lot of uh, good results showing out there. And I just put a link into the chat that has uh, direct access to that blog that uh, Colleen was mentioning about uh, the, the marketing agencies. Great, thanks. Perfect. Yeah, so if anybody's interested, I'm happy to set up calls or demos or talk to anybody, answer any questions, even not about Feedback 5, but any other review or feedback questions. Um, and uh, yeah, so. No, I mean, I really appreciate you going through this. I mean, this is really exciting. I mean. Uh, coming from someone who sold on Amazon before, the the reviews are often the hardest thing at the beginning because who's not many people are buying uh, anything with zero reviews and you definitely don't want to go the, the black hat way. So right. <laughs> Amazon's getting too smart for that. Yeah, no matter what tool or what you know method you have, just make sure you're following the guidelines. So yeah, the, the good, good guy always wins in the long run. <laughs> Well, Colleen, thank you so much for your time. Um, we appreciate you coming on to the Ping Pong webinar series. And thank you everyone for joining in the series. And we'll uh, talk to you same time this, this, yeah, same time next week. Next week. Thank you very okay. much. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Antonio. Bye, Colleen. Have a good day.